Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure load balancer on Azure. For that, we need a few resources and I'm going to create all those resources from this script as you can see on the screen. We're first going to create this resource group and then a virtual network and a subnet inside of that virtual network. And the next step is creating two virtual machines so that we can load balance between those two virtual machines. So we are creating a few other resources as well like this network security group and availability set. We are implementing this network security group because it is easier for us to manage security of these VMs. For example, if we are creating two network security groups for each of these VMs, it will be hard for us to manage these um, things. And also we are creating this availability set and we are placing these two VMs in this availability set because it is important when we configure load balancer. I'm mainly using this script to create the resources on Azure because I need to save time. If I'm creating each of these resources on Azure one by one, it'll take a long time. And that is why I'm using this script to create all our resources. I'll be attaching this script down below if you want to reuse it and if you want to go through it uh, to understand better. Now let me copy all these commands and paste this in my PowerShell to create all the resources. All right, as you can see, the resources are getting created. So one thing to note here is that these VMs that are getting created will have a public IP address. We are creating these VMs like that because we need public IPs for us to log in and install web server that we're going to test with our load balancer. And after configuring our load balancer, we are going to remove this public IP address so that it'll only be accessible from the virtual network. As you can see, we have all the resources created. Now let me go to my Azure portal and click refresh. We have our resource group. Inside of that resource group, we have all our resources. As you can see, we have one resource group attached to these two network interfaces. Let me go into this resource group and network interfaces and show you as you can see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install Apache server on both of these virtual machines. For that, I'm going into inbound security rules and allow SSH traffic. For that, let me click on add here. The source, I'm going to keep any and uh, the service is SSH. And I'm going to allow this SSH traffic. Let me click add. Now I'm going back to my, um, let's wait a little bit here until this gets created. All right, now that is ready. Now I'm going back to my PowerShell window and here I'm going to copy this public IP address of virtual machine one and then I'm going to SSH into it. As you can see I had to try two times here because we have just updated the network security group it can take few seconds for it to update. Right now I'm going to SSH into it. Now let me install Apache server. I have this script right here for doing that in both of these virtual machines. As you can see, we have installed Apache server on both of our VMs. Since we have public IPs attached to both of our VMs, let me go back to my Azure portal and then add HTTP access to these virtual machines so that we can see the HTTP server running. I think that'll be helpful for getting an understanding on what happens here. Um, I'm going to allow any address, the destination, yeah, the service is HTTP, allow, port is going to be 80, let me save it now. All right, now I'm going back to my resource group and this network security group and network interfaces that uses this network security group. Now let me copy these IP addresses. This is the, uh, the IP address of virtual machine one. As you can see, it is accessible from public internet. And also we know that the virtual machine web service is running. Now it's time for us to create the load balancer. For that, I'm going into my resource group and I'm going to create my load balancer resource. Let me search for it. As you can see, we have that here. Let me click create. And the name, I'm just going to call it LB1 and the region is Southeast Asia. It's going to be a public load balancer and SKU basic is enough and tier is regional. Frontend IP address, since this is a public load balancer, I'm going to assign a frontend IP address.
all right the next step is adding backend pools so now let me click on add backend pool i'm going to call it bp1 and the virtual network is the one that we have created sea vnet i'm going to associate this backend pool with virtual machines here you can add virtual machines i want to click add and here we have the two virtual machines that we have created i'm going to add both of them if you haven't added these two virtual machines to one availability set there will be an issue you won't be able to add both of these vms that's why i have added a availability set as well now let me click add as you can see we have the virtual machines in this backend pool the next step is creating a load balancer rule for that let me call this rule one and front-end IP address that we have just created I'm going to select that and port is going to be port 80 and backend port is also port 80 and backend pool is the one that we have just created and we need a new health probe let me create that now it's going to be HTTP 1 this is okay looks good for me let me click add and finally let's create the load balancer our load balancer is ready let me go to that resource and if I go into front-end IP configuration you will see the front-end IP address the public IP address of this load balancer now if I try to access it as you can see we are getting this message from our virtual machine one now let me reload this page as you can see we are getting messages from both of our virtual machines if I click this again you will see that it uh, it balances the load between these virtual machines and now let me go back to my resource group let me go here now since this is accessible from the public IP address of my load balancer I don't want my VMs to have public IP addresses so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to detach public IP addresses from my virtual machines for that let me go into networking of these each of these virtual machines and I'm going to click on this public IP address first I'm going to remove the association and then I'm going to delete this public IP address all right now that is deleting let me go back to my virtual machine 2 and then networking and public IP address let me uh, disconnect that as well and then we can delete the public IP address of this as well all right both of my public IP addresses of my two VMs I have removed them now let me go back to my website and as you can see this still works if you find this configuration not working one of the most important things for you to look into is network security group section here we have enabled access from port 80 and port 22 as well always look into this to find if you have any missing configurations and now let me do another exercise here let's go to let's try to refresh this and as you can see we are getting load balance responses um, now I'm going back to virtual machine 2 and let's stop this virtual machine all right now let me go back to the website and let's try to refresh it as you can see we're getting the response from virtual machine 1 seamlessly if you have any questions or comments leave them down below and don't forget to subscribe if you think you learned something new today and thanks for watching